You're listening to the Murphology Podcast. Thanks for tuning in to the Murphology Podcast. I'm your host, Kathy, a.k.a. Murph. I'm here to share with you interviews about biking experiences from bicyclists who have pedaled to great places all over the U.S. Each week, we will get to know new people and explore new destinations to ride your bike. As you listen to the amazing adventures people share, you may wonder, why haven't I done that? Well, on the show today is Kristen Musatelli Heath. Did I say that right? Yeah, you did an awesome job. Awesome. Well, how are you doing, Kristen? I'm doing really well. Thank you. Good. Well, we have been talking before we push record, so I already feel like I know you and I would love to ride bikes with you sometime, but I'm pretty sure that you live nowhere near Iowa. I do not live near Iowa. (laughs) I would also like to ride bikes with you. I feel like we would have a lot of fun. No, I don't, but hopefully I'll just add that to the number of states that we try to race in. Maybe we can find something good out there. Yeah, well, we do tons and tons of gravel type racing in Iowa. So if you, and it's usually like Sufferfest kind of things where you, you don't know where you're going until you get to the race start and then they hand you the cue sheets and you you have to just figure it out. So seriously, yeah, those are fun. So that sounds amazing. Yeah. I've not done a race like that yet. So I'm definitely adding that to the bucket <laughs> list. Well, why don't That's you, so cool. <laughs> why don't you start out by telling us a bit about where you do live and what the bicycling culture is like there? Yeah, I live in, I live about 15 miles north of a city called Syracuse, New York, which is right smack in the middle of New York State, but a lot of people know it because we have a, I think a big basketball team. Oh, sure. Um, Yeah, Syracuse, the Orangemen. Yeah. And um, we actually, so upstate New York, if you've heard anything about it, is exactly what it's rumored to be. There's, we get all of the seasons and then like extra seasons, so we get weather that is pretty epic here not as epic as some of the places i've been but still pretty epic Mm -hmm. lots of snow um we do definitely experience all of the weather we can have 20 30 degree temperature shifts in a day that's not unusual here um and it's a really very pretty area to live in and as far as as biking goes the biking culture it is pretty intense there's literally um because we have all four seasons we have all kinds of biking. Mm -hmm. So fat biking is very popular and fat bike racing is definitely increasing here. Mm -hmm. Um, We have, I think the only thing that we don't have a lot of in this particular region, but we do have it all around us is we have a lot of good mountain biking trails. We don't have good, we don't, we really don't have any mountain bike races, which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, We had, we had at one point in time, a really big boom. We were the, at one point, the large, the fastest growing region for a triathlon in the country. Mm. Um, that has since waned a little bit, but we still have a pretty good and strong culture around that. We have a lot of road racing around here and a really rapidly growing cyclocross scene. So, Mm -hmm. you know, particularly women in cyclocross here has, I'd say quadrupled over the last four or five years. So that's been really exciting. Mm -hmm. And we have some really great, we do have a lot of gravel riding here also. So we do have a lot of seasonal roads. Um, and that's typically where you get a lot of that good kind of a lot of good elevation gains Mm -hmm. and kind of those dirt gravel type terrain that make for good gravel racing so Mm -hmm. there's a lot of a lot of um bike culture here a lot of different kinds of racing there's pretty much just about every kind you can think of except for track we do have i've raced crit i've raced all all kinds of things in this area so we're pretty we're really lucky and then the only other thing i'll say about this that people don't think about is in areas with a lot of snow particularly us we have extremely wide shoulders on our roads because we have so much snow right that's got to go somewhere and that makes for really fantastic riding Um, when you think about it, like a lot of space, when you go up to other Northeastern cities or Northeastern areas, you really don't see as much of that as you do see around our area where you have just really fantastic kind of shoulders Mm -hmm. for, for riding really long periods of time. Mm -hmm. So that's a nice benefit that people don't think of for areas that have a lot of snow. For sure. For the most part, are drivers pretty bike friendly or are you just thankful that you have that big shoulder? I think we're really thankful that we have that big shoulder, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and I see more and more people gravitating towards off-road for just that reason. And I think mm-hmm. just as a, you know, by and large, this is not new to anybody, but I think across the country or as a culture, we're seeing just generally people are much more distracted while they're driving. Mm-hmm. And we have a really bike-friendly, I think by and large, bike-friendly society in this region we don't see a lot of that aggression towards cyclists necessarily that you kind of read about or see about in other places um but it's still 
you know, you get a lot of people driving really fast and that are distracted, especially sure. out in roads with like lots of space. And mm-hmm. I think more and more people are gravitating to getting off the roads for that reason. Well, um, you've mentioned all different kinds of ways to bike, but do you have a couple of like great places that you love to go when you have like uh, an afternoon off or the weekend? Yeah, there's right around here. Um, I mean, there's there's if I have time to drive, I'll there's some great places I drive to. But right around here, there we are, there are actually some really wonderful trails that have been getting even more wonderful over the last couple of years, thanks to some really hardworking people um, that maintain our trail system. Um, but we have uh, there's a state forest rather called Morgan Hill. That's some really nice single track that's been getting groomed and built out. And you know, you probably got. It's not extensive, extensive, but really nice, all different kinds of little technical pops and things like that. It's really mm-hmm. fun. Um, and then you've got a state park where, unfortunately, they haven't been as friendly um, to some of the trail expansion there. But we are seeing progress with still some really nice riding. That's probably one of my favorite places to ride. That's called Green Lake State Park. Mm. Um, and then, you know, there's just some nice, if you're in it just for like an afternoon or want some easy zone two riding, we're really lucky because we have some nice canal trails like really extensive very long wreck trails that used to be you know kind of rail beds and um the erie canal which is famous right runs yeah. right through syracuse yeah, so we yeah. have that and and that connects some parks and other things as well so it's really a it's really a nice there's a lot of nice riding around here those are some of my favorite areas right in this particular region probably within like 20 miles and sounds beautiful just by that your description you gave yeah, they're really nice. We have a lot of really green, green, green areas, forests, and really nice areas for mm-hmm. riding. Okay, so now you're out riding. I'm going to guess that you have more than one bike. I'm just feeling this. I have so, seven bikes. Seven. Yes. All right. Well, seven. what's your bike or bike of choice? Or is it based on weather or uh, events you're in? No, or? no. This is easy. No, I, I, <laughs> no, I, I, so I feel torn because I actually do have two. So I love my full suspension mountain bike. That mm. is probably, it's just, I mean, it's just so freaking fun to ride a full mm. suspension mountain bike. You know, there's really not anything I think much more fun than that. <laughs> and then, um, my TT bike, which seems really crazy, right? Considering that a full suspension mountain bike would be my favorite bike, but on a TT bike, you just feel so like fast and smooth. And yeah. there's just so much joy, I think, in just, you know, hammering on a TT bike. That's kind of hard to replace. Plus, my TT bike is really pretty. So I tend to, I think it's a little flashy and I love it. So those are my, <laughs> those are my two, um, probably. And then followed by my, like, I have a, a hardtail. Uh, mountain bike it's also very flashy so nice full suspension though hard I mean hard definitely just there's so much fun that you can have on it you're like a little kid there's nothing yeah. more fun yeah. so I know you said you don't have one yet but I yet. highly yet right and you are I hope looking at full suspension yes right yes, yes perfect. in Iowa we do not have mountains I'm sure mm-hmm. you know that but mm-hmm. yet tons of people do mountain biking and we have lots and lots of trails. So I'm mm-hmm. hoping that I can, you know, go to my lo- lo- local bike shop and they will be an expert for me. But I'm not opposed to, you know, jumping in the car and taking a long weekend and driving like to, I don't know, Colorado or somewhere and finding right, a, Upper Peninsula of Michigan. There or, you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Find, <laughs> any of those places. Yeah. Finding a bike shop that, you know, where everybody in there lives and breathes mountain biking, but. Anyway, I yeah. have I have a little bit more time till I get one, but it's it's man, it is on the radar. I'm ready. Yes, and then and then the only bike I I really don't have but want is an enduro bike. That seems like mm, a lot of fun. Yeah, doesn't that seem fun? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it's a new whole new way to injure yourself. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> well, okay. So speaking of injuring yourself, I'm sure it's happened or time or two. But I wanted to get in mm. some of the epic bicycle events that you have raced in because mm-hmm. um, I follow you on social media and every time you post an event you've done, I'm like. <gasps> Wow, that is amazing. So uh, hopefully you're willing to share some of your events. I am. I think it's a super sweet for you to say that because there are so many amazing athletes that do these things regularly. And I feel like every time I'm just this newbie that's like goes out and tries it. But I probably have to stop saying that because I have yeah. at this point in time done like I've done hundreds of races and all kinds of different races. But I still always feel new. I don't know that I'll ever get over that. 
that mm. feeling of being new. But yes, I'm happy to talk about any any events that you'd like to talk about. Well, the I think the most recent, at least that I saw, was the polar roll. So I'd love yes. to have you tell us, you know, maybe what it is, location. Yeah. I don't know uh, how you did, anything fun about it, or wherever, you, whatever you want to yeah. talk about. Yes, I want to talk about that. I just can't talk about that without then also mentioning Margie Gessick. Is that okay? Yeah. That oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Polar Roll is a fat bike race up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. It's a point-to-point race. Um, they have multiple distances. They have 15-mile distance and a um, – it's supposed to be 30 miles, but once you get to know the race director, his name is Todd Paquette, you'll understand that nothing he says is actually accurate. So he <laughs> loves to he loves to tell you these things and get you out there on your bike and – sort of like you were saying these kind of you know races where you don't really know what you're in for until you're in it <laughs> I think we all kind of know what we're in for until yeah. when we're in it but at the same time he just loves to kind of throw these wrenches at you so the 30 mile is actually 39 miles oh um yes um and it is on some of the most amazing trails and it's just an incredible race and I think people are waking up to the fact that um, 906 adventure races are some of the best races in mm-hmm. the country. Mm-hmm. Um, this one is just as epic as, as Todd's other races. So he puts on three races and we had just gotten fat bikes. When I say we, I mean, my husband and I, maybe like hmm, two, a month or two ago, we literally didn't own fat bikes oh. until then. And, um, we had the opportunity to go up and participate in this race. We felt like we absolutely had to because his races are so epic. And it was, it was uh, negative eight degrees and 20 miles an hour <laughs> winds at the start. Had never done a fat bike race, had never done, quite frankly, a winter race at all. Oh, man. I'm not a cold weather person. I had to literally, <laughs> I can't tell, I did not want to get out of the car before the start. <laughs> I just did not want, and I kept like sitting there and I had like piles of clothes that I'd brought with me, and I kept like thinking, should I put on another layer? Should right. I put on another layer? You know, and, right. and there's a fine not, line, there's a fine line between being freezing cold and hot when you're on you know like a winter ride because you oh will my gosh. you'll be like oh god I can't even feel my fingers and then a mile later you're like I'm sweating like yes. it's crazy yes and it's so important too because if you get wet and you're drenched oh, yeah. and then like later if you're depleted you're calorie deprived and the, you know temperature drops so the wind picks up which could very easily happen up there you know then you're in big trouble right because right. now you're wet and right. you're cold and you know that's I definitely saw. And there were a couple, there was a rest stop that I pulled up to and I looked, uh, you know, I got off my bike and I looked over and this guy was just standing there shuddering, like head to toe. And mm. you could just see he was in a really bad place. And you're like, oh my God, that could be me. You know, <laughs> you don't know, <laughs> you know, you're like, I gotta get out of here because it's like, you know, <laughs> it gets in your head that that could be you. And you're like, oh, if I stay here, I'll get cold you know, and things like that. So it is very hard to understand if you're, you know, am I layered properly? Properly and not having had the experience before and then kind of jumping into one that's really extreme like that. It was a total guessing game. I will say there are some things that I think were super important about us successfully completing that. We, we set out intentionally not to race that race. We really just wanted to survive it. Mm. Um, and we did, and we had a great time. And usually I do go out and, and race kind of hard and I'm known for being a little bit over competitive. Um, but so it was a different experience for me to just go out and like ride a race, sure. which is sort of what we did. But we committed to each other that we would ride together and ride easy. And that way, if we died, we'd die together. <laughs> and so we felt like, OK, this is a path that we can maintain. Um, and so we we just did it. It was really great. And uh, we had so much fun. It's so beautiful up there. It was challenging. Yet there were times that you're like, oh, I'm actually having fun. Then you're times where you're like, God, I am so miserable. And it's right. that sucker fest mentality. You're like, I right. just got to survive this. But it, it was an amazing experience. The hacks that I would say were that, um, you know, we had we had uh, bar mitts, uh, but yep. we uh, invested in some uh, the 45 North, like kind of really extreme bar mitts. Um, and they, you know, they're a little pricier. Totally 100 percent worth it. Oh, I will yeah, tell I'm you. Sure, so yeah. if you're going to do something like that that has to and I am not sponsored by anybody in any way so I can just tell you these are <laughs> just a hundred percent cold person you know vouchering that these things are amazing and then 
um, I've said this a couple times this past winter. I, you know, I got finally some really intense winter riding boots and those have changed, you know, my life significantly. So those are two really big investments, I think, made it possible to do something like that. It mm. seems silly that something like that, but really, if you're able to keep your feet warm and keep your hands warm and then you can kind of regulate your layers other than that, that's to, to the point you were making before so so much a part of your success it's almost just as much a part of it as your fitness or your fuel or anything else is in that kind of a temperature Mm -hmm. situation being able to regulate like your your dampness and your temperature are just as important to you finishing the race as anything else sure well especially when you're in that extreme of conditions like that's uh, you know it's not life ending is probably a little bit too severe to say, it but, <laughs> it, but it is, you know, game changer when all you can think about is your fingers and toes falling off. Like, ugh. yes. Yes. So. And I did end up with frostbite on my ear, which is still kind of bothering me and peeling and kind of not looking very pretty, but, mm. um, because I was too hot and sweating with my cap on, but you know, when I took it off, I had nothing to protect my ears. I didn't really think about that. Um, so my temperature got regulated more accurately, but my extremities were exposed. So again, oh, like yeah. those are things that are, you know, you just, I you, you didn't think through quite enough. I just, just you learn it with experience, right? Sure. The yeah. other thing is we never had our fuel freeze during a race before. Oh gosh, and, I didn't even think <laughs> about that. Yeah. So that happens, you know, we had bought like the insulated water bottles and everything. Um, one of the tricks that, you know, uh, we were told was if you kind of swap out your bottles, kind of keep putting them in the back pocket of your um, riding gear. Mm-hmm. Right. And then that'll keep it from freezing entirely. That worked sort of we just sort of ended up with slushies mostly oh, um, sure, which yeah. was actually delicious but <laughs> they're you know some of them did freeze all the way and it was it was difficult so yeah it was we learned I learned so much from doing it and honestly that's like one of the reasons why I, I just learned to really embrace going on doing things even if I don't have a lot of experience doing it because you learn so much every time yeah, and then I yeah. just wish I had I wish I had a a way to tell people like all the crazy things I've learned. So that was, there were some really big learnings in that race, but it was so fun. And if you get a chance to do it, I would totally encourage it. Cause you said you do have a fat bike, right? Yes. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So you said that was called the polar roll and it's in Michigan. It is starts in Marquette and ends in Ishkoming. Okay. All right. And I can't tell you before we started experiencing some of the riding up there, I would not have believed it. And that is unfortunately a phrase that's used far too often is that they just have astounding riding up there Mm. and it is gorgeous country. It is just like breathtaking. There are areas, the shore and the, the great lakes and those regions are just so beautiful you just constantly find yourself looking around going like this is so beautiful and the forest is beautiful and they have such challenging terrain and all of it is just amazing but the first time we went up there was for this is where i'm coming to the point where i said i had to mention margie gesek was for a mountain bike race that is held in september called margie gesek and that um unfortunately sold out or fortunately if you're the race Mm -hmm. sold out in three three minutes this year it's just become so popular i think it almost has a cult-like following it's so difficult 70 percent of the participants did not complete it this past year unfortunately was one of those yep and it's just it's there's no in these races like polar roll and margie gesic um they're not about awarding prizes Mm -hmm. they're really literally they don't do age groups they don't do anything like that if you if you make it under a certain time you can get like a buckle but other than that there's no awards um, it's really about surviving and completing that. Right. I was going to say, it's um, more about how you feel inside. Like, oh, my God, I just did that. <laughs> it is really, it's truly about that. Like, that's really the environment. Even quitting or, you know, I, I didn't make a time cutoff. I didn't make the 2 a.m. time cutoff. Mm. That is even, like, just having put the effort in there, there's a certain respect that everybody that participates kind of gives each other for mm-hmm. even kind of going out there and doing it. So there are just some astounding race opportunities out there. And you said that one is called Margie Gessick? Yeah. So is that a person that it's named after, I'm assuming? Yes. Yes. There's a really cool history about that. And I'm I'm hoping I'm going to do it justice. There's a great article that was posted on the Margie Gessick Facebook page a couple months ago. Um, A woman had done a great write-up of it. Unfortunately, it's not a fantastic story, but Mm. it is 
about there was an Indian leader um, and there he was really instrumental in um, in acquiring that portion of the territory. Mm-hmm. His story isn't actually a great one. It's relatively sad. It's one which, um, you know, certainly those people were disadvantaged and he specifically was disadvantaged. But um, I think the point of naming the race was really to give some honor and and um, respect for sure. you know kind of their that contribution his contribution mm-hmm. so it's a really cool story not a, not a fantastic story it does turn out better at the end but really appreciate obviously the fact that there was a lot of intentionality in what they named the race mm-hmm. awesome and it's sold out so nobody should even look it up yet well I'm, I'm, this is fortunately or unfortunately oh. <laughs> um yeah if you are a female they are striving very hard like many admirable races to get to some sense of gender equity in terms of participation hmm. right and encouraging female participation so there, Margie Gessick has two main distances. There are other races um, that he has. There are runs. as It's a trail run as well as a bike, a mountain bike. Mm. Um, but it's a 50 mile or 100 mile. Last year, they actually had something called the out and back where you would literally do exactly what you, it sounds like, go both ways, mm-hmm. um, which is crazy. And then there was a duathlon where I think you run 40 and ride 60. I mean, it's pretty intense. So they've got some really crazy options. Um, but for females that want to participate in either the 50 or the 100, I think of either discipline, the run or the bike, definitely the bike. Um, if you put yourself on the wait list, Todd will move you to the entry list oh. until they get to a certain level of participation sure, for okay. females. I'm not sure what the target is this year, but you know, it's not indefinite, but you know, they are trying to get more women to, to try it. And I'll tell you, I've been really like peer pressuring as many women as I can. And uh, I've only been able to convince one so mm, far. Well, <laughs> so, so here's your chance can, ladies who are listening. Yes. 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 <laughs> You should definitely check it out. You should definitely go for the experience. And if anything, you know, there's no shame in trying and not finishing. I did not finish. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm definitely going to finish this year. All right. Well, speaking of Sufferfest, um, two other rides that I wanted you to, you know, tell us a little bit about. Uh, the Rattling Mountain Bike Marathon, which just mm-hmm. sounds brutal even saying it. And then Leadville 100, which I have interviewed people on this podcast before. You have participated and raced in both of those, correct? Yep, I've done Rattling once, I've done Leadville twice, and I'm actually slated to do Leadville again this year. Oh, okay. So yeah. give us some, some highlights of that those experiences. A quick interruption to tell you this week's podcast is sponsored by Lizard Lips Lip Balm. These great lip balms contain natural ingredients, come in a variety of flavors, and you can choose certified organic or balms with sun protection. Check it out at lizardlips.net. Now back to the show. Yeah, so rattling was something we tried for the first time last year. And I'll tell you what made that race so different for me compared to all of the other races we've done is it's just, I, when I got done, all I could say was like miles and miles and miles of rock gardens. I mean, you are just continuously riding over rocks oh. that I just never saw. And they're not, you know, it's not like you're riding necessarily up or at a grade over rocks. You're just riding over like pretty technical rock gardens mm. for for quite a ways. Um, and I think this is, this sounds strange, but when I wrote it last year, I think even between last year and this year, my technical skills have improved so much that Mm. I'm hoping I'll be able to ride much more of it last than last year. Last year I wrote a lot of it, but I went over my handlebars. I swear to you, no less than probably 12, 14 times. I mean, I I literally, I (laughs) didn't know it was possible to go over your handlebars that many times. I mean, that's how, Gosh. yes. And then at one point you find yourself kind of standing in the middle of like a river and you're not really sure where the trail is going. And you're, I mean, it is just, it's just one of those epic races. There's some really intense you know, long climbs, the climbs are mostly on like a Jeep roads or, you know, kind of a more of a, an expanse as opposed to single track, but mm-hmm. they're, and then there's a lot of like flowy single track. I mean, there's just some great terrain in that race. It gives you such great experience and training, but it's, that's pretty epic too. And also very beautiful. So mm-hmm. it's kind of tucked away in the middle of nowhere. 
um, and that one's in Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. That one is not sold out, so okay. you should definitely look into that one. And it's a really, really fun but very challenging mm-hmm. race. So mm-hmm. I, I bled a lot in the race, but, <laughs> but if you're more technically skilled than I am, which is probably not too difficult, then you would do better. <laughs> So don't, I don't want to scare anybody away from trying. You should definitely try it. It's a really great race. I don't know that I could physically get back on my bike after flipping over that many times. I would probably just stand there and stare into space like, I, no. maybe I'm just there, not <laughs> made for this. <laughs> I mean, you definitely, I've definitely had those moments. You know, I had one moment where, like, I, I'm not proud. But, you know, I flipped over my handlebars and I just laid there on the ground for a second. <laughs> and I made, like, the girliest noise like I've ever made I was like uh, uh, like, I mean, like, noise, like just like like it's so pathetic but no I I got up you know and I kept going and it's fine I mean it's, I think it's healthy to have those moments of like self-indulgence oh, for, for sure. just a second or two I mean acknowledge what you're doing is really hard because it is really hard yeah you can't look, lie to yourself and then just like oh just gonna keep going like just keep going so wow um, so then with Leadville 100, you have to qualify for that event. Is that true? You have to qualify or you can get in through the lottery. Oh, that's right. Um, so the first time I qualified in, I got, I, I did a qualifying time and then I got a coin at the end of the race. Um, that was 2016. I qualified for 2017. And then in 2019, last year, I got in through the lottery, which hmm. is like, crazy i i had uh, the goal was we'll put our name in for the lottery and then if we don't get into the lottery we'll do a qualifier Mm -hmm. but crazy i got into the lottery which i you know i just didn't think my odds were very good and then this year actually i got in a completely different way so leadville this year is the same weekend as a relatively new very long gravel race called steamboat gravel Mm. And when the two race organ and steamboat gravel is about, it's in steamboat Springs, starts in steamboat Springs, which is about two hours uh, north of Leadville. And when the race organizers realized that they had scheduled for the same weekend, um, and there were a lot of people that like to participate in both rather than, you know, there's a lot of logistics for both races rather than cancel or reschedule either one of them, they decided to create this, this, combined challenge called the lead boat oh which yes which is um leadville 100 on saturday and then steamboat gravel on sunday no so, um, way yeah, those are two so the, wow yeah so steamboat i've never done obviously that's 144 mile gravel race mm-hmm. um steamboat black they have other distances and then the leadville i've done a couple times and so right so they took applications they were going to choose uh, 50 people to participate in lead boat 25 men 25 women um you had to write an essay or i wrote an essay but you had to write like <laughs> they picked people based on like applications okay um and based on your experience and applications and so i applied and i wrote like a little essay and i was one of the 25 women chosen so um, I'm doing lead boat now. I say I was chosen, but there are a number of people that just happen to get into both. And I think there's some trending. You probably find some trending hashtags on Instagram and such called like lead boat unofficial or roll my own lead boat. Like people have some jokes about it, you know, <laughs> that are like that are participating in both. But there's 50, 50 people that are in this kind of quote unquote official lead boat. And that's how I got into lead boat was I was selected for lead boat. Nice. Wow, I'm going to be cheering you on for that because that's uh, because I'll be there as a spectator. Are Uh, you? Probably not at Steamboat, but uh, for sure I'll be at Leadville. So I'll have to uh, track you down and look for a fancy bike and know that it's probably something. Oh my gosh. (laughs) My bike is not that fancy. My my small suspension is not that fancy. It's very, very, it's awesome, but it's very, you know, kind of black. But it's, um, have to connect somehow sweet but yeah. yeah are you crewing for somebody probably not I'm probably just going to be I think we're going to try and do some volunteering um, oh, awesome. because the the two people that are I'm going to spectate they have a pretty well-oiled crew because they yeah. do it every year so I, I wouldn't want to get in that mix yeah. and mess things yeah. up <laughs> Well, you oh. can come over to my ragtag yeah, crew. Okay. I, we are not well oiled. <laughs> you know, no, we 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 have learned a lot, as we said the, the first couple times of doing it. So I've done it twice. My husband was supposed to do it 
again last year, but he tore his Achilles in half. So he's uh, one behind me now. He's only done one, and he's also – he got into – he was able to defer. So that's how he's in Leadville this year. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then um, you mentioned at the beginning that you have a time trial bike or TT bike. Yes. So what is – I don't understand how you go from mountain biking, riding over big rock gardens – and you know risky movements to just boom you're on a time trial bike and you're just going as fast as you can for as long as you can like how does that mental game flip I think I think the suffering is similar you have to suffer you have to suffer a lot like in endurance racing you have to really be prepared to suffer I mean Mm -hmm. there's there's no no way that you're not going to get to a point in a hundred mile race of or Ironman or anything of not suffering a little Mm -hmm. and or a lot if if you're me suffering a lot (laughs) and so I you know I think the suffering is the same TT is just like as hard as you can go for you know the duration and you just have to be able to get into like that pain tunnel and sit there Mm. and it is it, I don't know. Even talking about it, I get all, you know, like I'm a five-year-old. I get so excited because there's just <laughs> nothing so, it's so much fun yeah. to just go fast. Like there's just, you know, to be like sleek and fast and just be, feel like you are one machine with your bike. It is different on a mountain bike. Very different. When you get into a groove and you can feel like you're, you're moving your body and you've got your weight distribution, you're kind of like one with your bike. You definitely feel that on a technical trail, especially when you're going to get into some swoopies or, mm-hmm. you know, you know, berms or, or other things. You definitely can feel yourself becoming like harmonized with your bike on a mountain bike, but there is just something about feeling like you're a powerful machine on a TT bike that is unique and special and awesome. And I know not everybody feels that way. Most people like hate their TT bike or hate the aero (laughs) position, but I don't know. I just like, I think it's because I have a lot of junk in my trunk and I think I can push out that power and I just absolutely, (laughs) I absolutely love it. So I'm actually, um, my coach gave me permission this year to go out and try the New York state time trials, Mm. um, as a break. He wasn't very happy about it, but he let me go do it and I won. So I, I know. So I, the, currently the New York state TT champ for masters women 40 plus and for women cat were um and then or actually i was on a team so i did a couple in a row time trials that day and we won that too so yeah I'm, congratulations I'm, that's cool and you. did you kind of like give a little hmm to your coach like oh you didn't I want did. me to do this i but. did i did <laughs> I totally did. Of course I did. He did, did not want me to do it. No. So oh, first was, place. I, huh. like, yeah. I don't know if oh, I can oh, beat first place, but hmm. yeah, look at that. Huh. Yeah. Oh, what do you know? Yeah. <laughs> A quick interruption to tell you this week's sponsor is Thirsty Pigs, a full-service mobile event company offering beer, wine, spirits, plus catering for any event. With over 18 years of experience, this team can do it all. Find out more at thirstypigs.com. Well, do you remember like why or how you started getting into events like this where, you know, like you are in a major mindset and you're going beyond maybe what you think your limits are? I, I mean, so I remember when I started, so I've always, I've, I've been in athletics since I was five and I'm not one of those people, unfortunately, because I really worry about this, that once I get to a point of, I I can't, I I struggle to, to just stay fit for the sake of staying fit. Mm -hmm. And I know lots of people that are amazing at just staying fit for the sake of staying fit, you know, that work out every day or maintain a great fitness regime and they, they don't really race. I am just not one of those people. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just very motivated by competition and you know, that's not necessarily met in an aggressive way. Although I think different people process things differently. So some people think like, well, you must be aggressive if you have to continuously compete. It's just something I feel like I just get a lot of, of joy from that. Mm. Um, you know, from pushing myself against other people, you know, benchmarks really. And those, those benchmarks are other people or metro, you know, or, or places in the race or what have you. Right. But I don't know. There's just, so I've been doing that since I was five. I, you know, played a lot of sports my whole life. Um, and then, you know, I got to a point where I, I tried like a lot of people, you know, their journey is the same. I started with like a sprint triathlon in 2009, 
and then I, you know, immediately went to Olympic and then I immediately went to half Ironman and then I've done five Ironmans. And then the nice. next thing you're like, you know, it's just, it always seems like what I can't explain why necessarily. Mm-hmm. I just, I'm always so interested in learning what there is to learn at that next step of the journey. There's so much to learn and I'm not like the best by any stretch of the imagination. I'm, I think I'm fairly competitive in terms of how I perform against other women. I mean, I'm better at some things than I am at others. I'm always a little above average. You know, I do well in what I try, um, but I'm not certainly not the best. I would never say, and, and gosh, what's been really humbling is I thought I was a pretty fast cyclist and then I got mountain biking. I'm like, God, I'm terrible. You know, like I'm just, not, <laughs> I can't keep up with these like talented women that like really know what the heck they're doing. You know, like they're just amazing. Like even the women that did polar roll this weekend, I mean, this, or two weekends ago, I was taking it easy, granted, but even if I wasn't taking it easy, I'm not under any delusions that I would have done a 340, you know, which Mm. is what some of these women did. There's just some astounding athletes out there. And so I don't know, there's just something really compelling about continuing to push your limits. And there's something so significant, I think, about what you learn in that journey Mm -hmm. about continuing to, to challenge yourself and then triumphing at the end over those really dark places that we talked about and such a benefit that you get from just living that experience. And then the other thing that I do, unfortunately, if you know me really well, and you spend a lot of time around me, you know, talk about all the time is that we are not, I I just have always felt very acutely aware that we don't get more than today Mm. and that we are given these amazing machines. These are these bodies that we have are like meant to do things. And, you know, they're, they're here to help us like, you know, kind of accomplish great things and have these experiences. And if we're not using them, then that's, I think, kind of truly a waste in some ways. And then also just however you can find your joy and gratefulness Mm -hmm. for each day that we have. Like to me, the way I express my joy and gratefulness for having a body that can do these things and for being alive is really to kind of go out and continue to have these experiences. That is how I show my appreciation, I think, to myself and just to whomever for just the opportunity to be here and mm-hmm. have every day. Yeah, looking at, you know, what you can physically do to your body um, or with your body, not either one, I guess. Um, that's mm-hmm. one thing, you know, you can uh, work out like, you know, you can just look at anybody around you. You've got people that are all different shapes and sizes and all of them put in different effort to make themselves you know, or not put any effort <laughs> to make them look mm-hmm. the way they look. But then it's also the mental side of it. Like um, we were talking before we pushed record that you are fighting this mental challenge of riding your bike upstairs, which yeah. <laughs> we had a, we had a good laugh about it. But to me, you know, there's the physical strength of being able to somehow put your bike tires upstairs and get up to the top. But then there's also the mental game of, you know, if you if you say you can do it, eventually you're going to do it because you're either going to keep, keep trying or it's just going to happen. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your perseverance will get you to a point where you'll figure it out one way or another. Yeah. You just keep wrestling it. But yeah, no, I agree. There's, I, I, I wish I had like a good simple answer though, because I get that question a lot. Like, why do you do these crazy things? Uh, It was not certainly things that a lot of people around me do. I mean, even in my cycling community, there are relatively few of us that kind of choose these longer some would say a little bit crazier opportunities we'll call them opportunities right to challenge yourself (laughs) there's just but there's something about it it's just so rewarding to go and challenge yourself in that way and come out the other end Mm -hmm. even if you're bleeding like for me I bleed (laughs) I bleed a lot but you know even if I'm bleeding like there's something that's so astounding about it and I can't I just can't tell you what it gives you like in terms of your you carry that around with you every day knowing like I did that, you know, I just biked 39 miles in negative eight degrees and, you know, I, or I did this or I did that. There's something so I don't know, profound in, mm-hmm. in what you get out of that. And so much joy of like life. I don't know. It's yeah. just, so I don't have a good simple answer. I wish I had a good sound bite. That would be great. I have to really work on that. Like a <laughs> yeah. cliche or. Yeah. yeah. Well, you definitely give off a great energy and a really good positive vibe. So um, I'm hoping that people are listening to this right now going, I, I really can't do what she's doing, but I might as well try. Like, No, but you can yeah. do what I'm doing because yeah. I started 
not knowing anything about what I was doing. You have everybody starts somewhere. You're and right. It's really yeah. just about saying you're going to do it. And you can, you truly can do anything that you say you can do. You just, it's about you and what you want. Mm-hmm. So people say like, well, I can't, you know, work out enough or I can't get the training in or I can't, you can, if you, you know, it, nine times out of 10, I mean, certainly there are always extenuating circumstances and sometimes you, you really, really, truly can't, but it's really about you and your priorities. If you say, I, you know, I don't love getting up at 4 a.m. on a Saturday morning to train, but if that's what I have to do to get my training in, mm. I'll do it. Right, right. Right. I'm not, I'm not a hero. I don't love it. I'd way rather stay in bed. Right. But it's, it is where my priorities are. Right. And you can do anything that you really say you are going to set out to do. You can learn this you can it's just about how you're going to dedicate yourself to it yeah that's well said there's your there it is I mean, oh can that I find it? <laughs> I should write it down yeah, yeah. i know <laughs> well um you mentioned let's see i think you mentioned leadville 100 but what mm-hmm. else is on your 2020 calendar so we have let's see here we so we've got rattling um there is a local mountain bike race that so it's it, they call it a gravel grinder now i've been doing it for 11 years mm. um and it's um it's called black fly challenge that's another one that's a point to point they change the direction every year um so each year it, it all you know it alternates the start location and the finish location i have been trying like crazy it's a truly you know, people race it more on cyclocross bike and there is a mountain bike category. And now there's even a fat bike category. I just, it's my goal in life to try to win that race on mm. the mountain, the mountain bike division. And I have come close and then I've had years where I'm not close at all. And I'll tell you, I came in second last year, but just to be perfectly transparent, I was second by eight minutes, which is an eternity. Mm. So it's not like I really was second. I was really like, you know, far <laughs> but <laughs> that is a goal race of mine it's always been a goal race of mine and people that know me well know that I would really love to win that race and I don't think that doesn't, certainly doesn't happen by accident but that's on my race list rattling um Leadville and so lead boat the combination mm-hmm. I'll just tell you that one has me truly frightened and if we can say another cliche I will say that it's okay to be afraid but don't let it stop you from doing things so I'm definitely afraid of lead boat this year <laughs> knowing how I feel at the end of Leadville every year you yeah. know the few times I've done it you know I'm in a pretty rough shape at the end of Leadville so to think that you know I'm going to get a few hours of sleep turn around and start a 144 mile growl race the next day that has me very worried there's a whole different kind of preparation to sure. go into that Leadville, Leadbo, um, Margie Gessick, um, and then we have some other, you know, we're looking at, there's a lot of, there's, like I said, we're really lucky. There's some great New York State mountain bike um, series. Mm-hmm. There's some great, there's actually a race that I don't know the race director. I went and down and did on a whim last year. It is, it's called, and see if I can get this right. I may get one of the words wrong and you'll see why in a second. It's called the International Intergalactic Global mountain bike relay of the multi friggin verse wow wow yes um or the ii whatever those those that acronym is and it's in pennsylvania in april and it is a choose your own adventure lap race so yeah so you can do it as a solo two three or four person team and the laps are about three ish miles um and each time you do your lap you can choose kind of multiple spurs right but the the trail always kind of um ends up getting to the same place Mm -hmm. you can just choose you know do you want do i want to take this one that has like a little bit of a log jump which might be more direct or do i want to take this curve around right but so your your distance can vary a little bit per lap it kind of depends on what's faster for you or what you want to do or whether there's like three people ahead of you or behind you on the trail what's faster what would maybe allow you to you know leapfrog somebody right so it's a really cool choose your own adventure lap race and then what makes it even more cool is the teams they have almost like this um, team alley where all the teams you know that are participating set up these tents and so during your lap you have to go through like that team alley each time which is really fun and these you know if you're a four-person team you could have kind of a ways before you ride again sure so you know people are hanging out and they're cooking hot dogs and like doing things like that and hanging and heckling and it's like kind of a crazy environment i had no idea what i was in for i chose <laughs> to do it last year by myself 
my husband was traveling somewhere else and I was actually driving on my way to a work function in DC. So it was on my way. So I said, I'll do this. It's a, it's a five hour race. Um, they actually lengthened it to six hours on the start line. So that oh. was fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, well, it's a great opportunity for me to get a bunch of training in. Um, you know, and, and single track. And so I did this by myself. I show up, I had no idea. I had no tent to hang out in. I really didn't have any place to like put my fuel or food or anything like that. I was adopted by kind of this like random group of guys <laughs> nice. that, you know, had some people that were racing and some people that weren't, some people that weren't racing. I'll say they were being very recreational and <laughs> I won't kind of go beyond that. And, you know, it was just kind of an interesting, like such a crazy, but awesome environment. It was one of the most fun things I've ever done. Nice. So I'm definitely going to go down and do that one again too. Like, that's what I mean. There's just so many fun, if you're willing to like, just try anything there's so many crazy fun experiences that you know i never would have had otherwise but that is that's one i can't speak highly enough about that was a lot of fun so oh, that's awesome yes so i think that's those are my big races mostly the ones that i've rattled off i will tell you um we do have kind of a little side note that we haven't done iron man in a couple of years we did five iron mans in four years i miss my i do miss iron man a little bit um, I know my coach would kill me, so hopefully he'll never listen to this <laughs> podcast. But um, if we get to a place where, you know, Margie Gusick is in September and, um, you know, by that point, Margie Gusick took me 20 hours to get to the mile 85 mark. Um, so I'm hoping if I do complete it this year, I would complete it in like 22 hours, maybe that uh, we would have enough fitness to go do an Ironman in like mm. November or something like that. So, um, I know that sounds crazy just kind of tack an Ironman on at the end, but it would be, I think, kind of fun to go back and do one if you have, you know, all that fitness and not waste it. So, sure. Well, so I guess you just said it, in. you just said it out loud. So now it's going to happen. Maybe I know. Possibly. And I'm, I, <laughs> people are going to kill me for saying that certain people <laughs> like my husband, they're going to kill me for saying it out loud, but, um, it, also it makes it more real, right? So yeah, maybe exactly. Yeah. Maybe I'll, I'll yeah. do that. So yeah, I know we have a lot of racing, uh, a lot of racing lined up this year, but a lot of like awesome epic experiences yeah. too. And then we've talked about, you know, after this year, kind of like sw- sw- swapping out and looking at some new States to get to and new experiences to have. So we're, you know, you talking about these crazy races in Iowa, that's yeah. a really cool thing. And I'll have to put that on the list. And you'd mentioned the, is it the San Juan hut system? Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah. have to look at that too. So I'm, I'm taking all suggestions. Yeah. That's you, awesome. There we go. For any cool new bucket race that I can take. Cool. Well, uh, last question for you. Um, you know, I, I feel like you've talked a ton about, you know, female racers or fe- getting females into events. Do you have any advice you would give fellow female athletes that maybe need a little motivation to get training more or to feel more confident or to just just sign up for something? Yeah, I have I have a couple things because I do. I'm really lucky. I, I am part of a women's race team, which mm. is a really awesome group of ladies, Syracuse Bicycle Women's Race Team. We race for the Syracuse Bicycle Race Shop at you know, I can't tell you how many, and one of the goals of that race team is really just is to be great ambassadors for the sport of cycling and to, you know, really demonstrate to other women that anything is possible in in terms of cycling. If they want to participate, you know, there's an opportunity and other women that would help them do that. But there's a couple of things, I think very similar to the struggles. And I don't mean to get too serious here, but the struggles that I think a lot of women in society have today around self-confidence that translates naturally to cycling or anything else, right? Any of these other kinds of pursuits. I find that a lot of women, they say, Oh, I would love to do that, but I could never, or, I just can't, I don't, I just, I don't think I could do that. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I really want to, but I don't think I could. Like that's, I hear that a lot. And, you know, I'm just so, I I just wish I could shout it from the rooftops. Like you, you absolutely can. And, um, you know, I'm here to believe in you and there's lots of other people here to believe in you. And there's just, if you want to, you can, Mm -hmm. that's number one. And and don't let your self doubt, like I have over lead belt, <laughs> like <laughs> stop you. Right. Um, a lot of women are challenged with, particularly for off-road, you know, there is a certain amount, I think a little bit of fear that comes in there. Right. I mean, riding a bike on the road or something is something much more people have experience with, mm-hmm. especially, you know, growing up even as little kids or anything else. Right. But getting off, I think people think about, 
and I probably don't help them with my Instagram posts, but you know, <laughs> um, crashing or bleeding or other things. I do post a lot of bloody pictures is probably not good or helpful, but they, you know, I think to think that, yeah, you, I mean, you might fall, right. That's like not the end of the world to like fall or fail in any way. Mm. I think that's another thing, right. Mm. Is to not, to kind of remove that barrier of fear in that. And then I think, also making sure that we get just get more and more women to help more and more women. And it becomes a great big like pyramid scheme of women helping women. Yeah. I think that is, you know, something else. And so each one of us, we can think about it has almost a responsibility to, you know, keep evolving so that we can turn around and evolve somebody else. Um, if they give, play into some of your like social responsibility mindset there. <laughs> but, oh, I love it. But, yeah. I think those are some of my biggest things. I know a lot of women that just, I, I hear so many times, well, I wish I could do that. And you can't, you, you can, you can do that. Mm-hmm. You absolutely can. And if you need help, you know, just don't be afraid to put your hand up and ask for help. And I'm sure there's someone to help you. I'll help you. There so, you go. <laughs> you, just have to, you contact me. I, you've, you've heard that I may not be the most helpful person to talk to, but I'll definitely try to help you. So, yeah. Well, you already helped me because I can't remember if we were recording or not, but I was talking about getting you know, my first mountain bike and going off road. And like you mentioned, you know, the fear of falling or the fear of getting dropped or the fear of just not being good enough. But uh, I wrote down two things very important be cat like and relax yes it's and cat like is a phrase yes a cat like is a phrase actually another woman taught me so oh. um yeah so I'll say sherry o'shea she you know so it was an instance where i rode and i thought i was being cat like and it was <laughs> <laughs> and she was like you look really straight and rigid you know <laughs> like why are you standing up like that no but you you know it's just it is it is all about being relaxed and it's the same it's no different in gravel or even in road i find you know even a lot of people will do it if they're on a sharp descent on the road even right you find yourself tensing your shoulders and tensing your elbow you can feel it in your forearms and everywhere else you're tensing and that makes you quite frankly a lot more likely to fall over mm-hmm. you know or crash mm-hmm. or jerk or because every mo- movement of your body then is going to be translated right to your bicycle which you know could jerk you in one direction or another even slightly could end up making you crash right if you're going fast enough or on a sharp enough descent so yeah, that's a big one is relaxing, which is so hard, right? And and yeah. another little trick on that is um <laughs> is like relaxing your eyebrows. Oh, like, really? I know. Yeah, it seems funny, but if you relax your eyebrows, your face relaxes, your neck relaxes, your shoulder relaxes, like things start to relax all the way down and you will be shocked if you start self checking yourself hmm. at how often you are like furrowing or doing other things or um, tightening your face or your jaw, even if you don't feel like you are, those self checks will kind of reveal to you how often that's happening when you're afraid or when you're doing something new. Awesome. Wow. Those are very, those are awesome tips. And you, we're not even here to get tips. No, we're here well, to I learn how I about crash a lot. So what I, a... <laughs> from that. I can tell you how not to crash. Yeah. That is, <laughs> all my, all my learning. Yeah. But but the moral of what you're, you know, speaking to is that anybody can do anything. And that's a truth, you know. So if mm-hmm. there's people out there thinking they can't, first off, they have to decide that they can and then mm-hmm. figure out how to do it, whether it's, you know, get out there and train or hire somebody to help you coach or mm-hmm. buy a bike, whatever it takes. You can do watch it. Watch YouTube videos. Yeah. I mean, there's so much information that's even just out there and that I can't tell you how often you know my coach has sent me a YouTube video that has turned me on to another YouTube video that has turned it's just you know just there's there's a lot of information out there it's just you know sometimes not knowing what exactly you're looking for so just being put on the right path is oftentimes you know helpful enough well Kristen this has been awesome thank you so much for being on the podcast oh my gosh you gave me a chance to talk about cycling yeah it's like the best present ever so thank yeah. you for inviting me and I look forward to seeing action like what happens on your next events and <laughs> you know even if it's the falls or getting up the stairs whatever it's really it's really a, a joy thank all right you for having me thank you 
Well, that's it for this week. If you have a moment, please go to your favorite podcast platform and subscribe, rate, and review the Morphology Podcast. Also check out morphologypodcast.com to find all kinds of great info. You can even email me your topic ideas at morphologypodcast at gmail.com. I'll leave you with this quote from the unwritten book of Morphology. This quote is from John Acuff. Be brave enough to be bad at something new. Think about it.